Yeah, it's just a word that we've used for so long. It's kind of funny because people are like, you're spelling it wrong. It's without the L. But I'm like, no, man, it's it's both. Dude. Like when I was growing up, it was always with the L. But now the younger generation is like, oh, you take out the L. Like, <laughs> Thugs, the gang members I help reform, get a second chance at life. People love buying cupcakes from ex-gang members. I thought you said I'd be designing solar panels and shit. Bitch, do you want me to relapse? Would you buy a cupcake? Thank you. Red Velvet is an amazing choice. This show had me laughing and rolling. Um, now, I grew up in the hood, so, and I love that you play against all the stereotypes. So was it the whole plan, like going in, they said, we're gonna, we're gonna play against all these stereotypes that people have in their mind? Uh, a little bit. I mean, I think a lot of it would just to be sort of subversive and think about things differently and whatnot and kind of mirror what was, what I felt was authentic to my life. From a narrative standpoint, I, my character is kind of going to an existential crisis <laughs> where he can't really help himself. So right. just narratively speaking, it's really, it, there was a really funny idea of like, a guy trying to help other people change their lives and he can't really help himself. I grew up in South Central, so it speaks you know, a lot to me because we've never really seen this portrayal and it's done in a comedic way and it plays against stereotypes because you think one thing and then it just totally turns it on its head. So was it for all of you part of the attraction of, of being part of such a unique kind of show? Let's start with Michael first. A hundred percent. I mean, it's a... Uh... And it, it, that can only happen if it comes from someone who comes from that world and understands it. And I think that's why the show, I think, is very important because it totally, you know, gets you past these stereotypes, but not in a way that's like hitting you over the head. It's in a comedic way, in an honest way and with a lot of heart. And I think I think that's very important right mm -hmm. now. And, and I'm proud to be a part of that. And then for you, Frankie, what is it? I love you from Cholo. I found you as Cholo Fit Creeper. I can't do your whistle. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, uh, uh, Michelle mentioned it the other day, too. It kind of turns those stereotypes on its head because I don't see it as like it's glorifying gang culture. Like for me, the, all my cousins, everybody, they were, they all, you know, were just representing that Cholo lifestyle. My dad was an old school Cholo, but, you know, by the time he had kids, he was all good. Um, and those are all feel good stories to me, you know, like. And in, in the show, it's all, um, you know, uh, people from the gang life that are reformed or trying to become reformed, like they're actively trying to make a positive change in their life. And that's something that, you know, I've seen change people's lives. And so um, I, I, that's, that's, that's how I see it, like the, the, the stereotype being seen in a positive light and all these people that have a, a, these opportunities and resources out there to change their lives and that they could do it, you know, whether it's for their family or through one of these programs, it's like, yeah, but there's a lot of funny stuff that happens in those environments. So. <laughs> and Fred, for you, um, we all know you from Portlandia, SNL, and there's a little bit of Portlandia kind of humor in here that I can see just because of playing against stereotype, right? Because in Portlandia, they kind of did that, like you expect one thing and then they totally do the, the opposite. So for you, um, how did you get involved? And, you know, how does it speak to you, this, this whole topic? Well, um, I got involved mostly because I'm a fan of Chris Estrada and, you know, I, I just am into his comedy and, uh, uh, and the, the other producers and writers as well. And as far as like uh, the, the, um, the way that like Portlandia would fit into it is just the sort of like absurdist situations. So each scene plays as its own kind of almost like a sketch, not quite, but there's like a little bit of an element of it being absurd. Um, so that's kind of like where it fit in for me. So, yeah. And also just the way it looks too, just yeah. sort of making it all look rich and colorful. And, um, I love the title, this fool. Um, somebody pointed out fool might be my favorite word. What's up fool. Shut up fool. <laughs> so, uh, what's your standing with the word? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's just a word that we've used for so long. It's kind of funny because people are like, you're spelling it wrong. It's without the L, but I'm like, no, man, it's, it's both. Dude. Like when I was growing up, it was always with the L, but now the younger generation's like, oh, you take out the L. Like, but I'm like, it's just so Sick funny. Ass food. It's been, yeah, that word has been that much of presence in our culture that now it's like, well, how do you spell it? Like, how do we do it? But, but yeah, yeah. It's like, what's up, oh, these fools? My mom says full, you know? Like, oh, yeah. hey, Hey, fool, how you doing? You handling your business or what? Like, yeah, mom, I'm all right, fool. You know, it's all good. <laughs> and Michael, for you, you kind of represent the East Coast. I don't know if that's an East Coast thing too, or if that's just like a Latino West Coast kind of deal. 
it's not but i i got the gist of it right away you know i and um i relate i'll put it <laughs> without a doubt yeah yeah and, uh, and aside from the comedy there's a lot of social commentary michael uh, you have this big you know monologue about you know uh, prison for you know for money and, and you know and, and that kind of a subject matter so for you you play a minister but you're kind of an angry minister it's kind of a is that what we're used to seeing right no he's um you know he's he's a socialist and he's fighting the system and he just he understands how corrupt it is and why the you know prison you know the whole prison industrial complex and how messed up it all is and you know, believes in this cause and, and you know, it, it really has dedicated his life to this, to changing this system and trying to help people. Uh, yet he's a little bit crazy, um, which is kind of the fun of it. You know, he's willing to do whatever it takes to keep this thing going. And I like it because he'll steal, he'll lie, he'll do whatever he can for hugs. Not It's not for himself. He'll live in the van. He doesn't really care. But when it comes to the the program he'll do whatever needs to be done and I, I love the, that passion it's really fun to play yeah for you michelle um you're funny because you, you you borrow you keep borrowing chris's car i call it stealing borrow, borrow. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> can you talk about tomato being, tomato <laughs> can you talk about being part of this project and you know what it means to you i mean yeah i mean i think the most important thing overall outside of my character is the fact that we are focusing on the aftermath of being incarcerated. And it's, I don't think we've ever seen the story of what happened afterwards. Your past doesn't necessarily inform your future. How do, after getting out of prison, how do you get a job when you have a record? Um, so I think that's what's really most important when it comes to these questions about like, what another show about cholos and gang members? Well, it's not what you think it is. And um, yeah, playing Maggie, has been the best part of my year. Uh, I just love that I got to bring a Latina punk rock chick onto the big screen, onto the streaming screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what I liked about it also was that you represent, you know, growing in South Central, you know, it's Latinos and African Americans and yeah. it's represented here because a lot of times you see a show that's specifically like all black or specifically yeah. all Latino and you don't see like the mixture and here you really get to see it and represent yeah. both, both communities. Yeah, that's that really, about it. Yeah, same. That was really important for me. Not from, not necessarily for any righteous reasons, but just yeah. to be honest about how I grew up. It was really important. Um, also, I, before I started this show, I came across this photo essay by this uh, this uh, photographer named Wendy Chang, and um, Asian American photographer. But she was really interested in. She was. She took these amazing black and white photos of black owned and Latino businesses that were right next to each other. Mm -hmm. in in south los angeles neighborhoods like south central inglewood compton it was really cool she would take a mural of like say the virgen de guadalupe next to a martin luther king mural mm -hmm. to kind of represent that dichotomy of these two groups that live next to each other so i that was really it was really important to me because i think a lot of shows when most when people think of uh, latinos in los angeles they they usually think of east los angeles you know or or sometimes so I, I, that's not my, that wasn't my upbringing, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Much success. And thanks a lot for your time. Thanks, Lupe. All right. Thank you. Thank you.